welcome back to the Citizen Channel. Hope you're all staying safe and well. And our preview shows, we look forward to Manchester City against Real Madrid, or as I call them, Dirty Madrid. Yes, on Wednesday the 17th of May 2023. Of course, it stands at 1-1, finally poised, finally balanced, of course, the Champions League semi-final, second leg. At the Etihad, so if you're there and you see me, come and give us a shout, because, although they did make a bit of a cock up selling the tickets, didn't they? But uh, nothing new there is with City, they never get things right, but uh, uh, they get it right on the pitch, don't they, normally? So uh, anyway, we, we can only carry on and hope for better things to come off the pitch. Please, if you are new to the channel, push that subscribe button, push the bell notifications. It would be great to have you on board. Spread the word as I fast approach 3,100 subscribers and keep pressing those buttons and telling people. It would be much appreciated. And of course, if you can keep pressing that button and give us a thumbs up for this vlog. I'm trying to get about 25 if I can. I sometimes get 30 or more, but at least get me to 25. Give that old uh, like button a smash, guys. That would be uh, very, very grateful. Right, let's get on with this review, this preview sorry not review we'll talk we'll have a review on thursday won't we hopefully a happy review a preview uh, this is on bt sport one bt sport ultimate our overall record of course now reads played nine won three drawn three lost three not bad but we are behind on the goals we've scored 13 and they've scored 14 so we've got to get that balance out of the way haven't we? we've got to, uh, got to make it improve on that of course Previously at ours, of course, we had the 4-3 uh, game last season, 26th of April 2022. And this is a little excerpt. The line-up that day was Edison Stones, Diaz, Laporte, Zinchenko, Rodri, KDB, Jesus, Bernardo, Foden and Maris. I wonder what's Zinchenko and Jesus. I don't know. I don't know where they are now. Uh, yeah, after two minutes, Maris jinks in and his cross is met by KDB, who stooped to give City a great start. 1-0. 11 minutes of KDB cross. He's not dealt with well by Alaba and Jesus. Zeus makes no mistake to make it 2-0 off the turn of the defender. 26 minutes, Maher has a great chance but hits a side netting when he may have done a little bit better. And Pep was furious, apparently. Uh, 33 minutes, it's 2-1. Benzema gets Real back in it from a Mendy cross. Sliced, volleyed in off the post. 36 minutes, Fernet replaces a struggling John Stones. Another injury for John. Half time 2 1. Second half, 48 minutes. Maris hits the post and Foden following up effort is off the line. So close to a 3 1. 53 minutes further, turns providers. Foden heads home to make it 3 1. 55 minutes, Vinicius Jr. leaves, leaves further. <laughs> Ferner for dead, he did, didn't he? And goes all the way to make it 3 2. Poor defending, but a well taken goal. 74 minutes, Bernardo with a superb strike after Zinchenko is fouled, but the referee waves play on. Courtois appears to duck under it, and it's 4-2 for City. 80 minutes, Laporte's arm is high, and it clearly makes contact with the ball, and a Penenka penalty, which the Real Madrid fans enjoyed, if, if anything of a show was on last week, is anything to go by. A uh, Penenka penalty by Benzema makes it 4-3 on the night. Key stats. Shots for City, 16, 6 on target. Real Madrid, 11, 5 on target. We had 60% of the possession and our pass completion rate was 88% compared to Real Madrid's 80%. So there you go, that was last year. So let's talk about this year now. We've got uh, an interesting, interesting uh, referee lineup. It's a, it's a... Uh, Unexpected. This guy's been parachuted in because uh, Ancelotti's not stopped whinging about the ball apparently going out last week. So he, he wants a he wants a stronger referee. So of course UEFA, uh, Real Madrid's their little darlings have, have have done done that for him and brought in a, an experienced referee. So hopefully he'll be fair. Well, it's Simon Marciniak uh, from Poland, so it's a Polish team with a with a Romanian fourth official. So this guy uh, was not initially expected to to feature in the semi finals, but his appointment comes, of course, uh, because he's supposed to be experienced. He did actually officiate the twenty eighteen World Cup final between Argentina and France. I have no idea how that fared, to be honest with you. He previously refereed. A Champions League semi-final match between Liverpool and Villarreal. Again, no idea what happened with that one. And he's done six Champions League games this season. 
shown a fair amount of yellows. He's shown 23 yellows and two second yellows, so about four a game. Uh, so uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully he'll he'll ref it fairly and and yeah, um, harshly. Uh, well, you know, let let's uh, if it's dirty Madrid, let's hope he, he puts his foot down with a with a firm hand. That's all I can say. His assistants: Pavel Sokoliniki from Poland, Tomasz Listikiewicz from Poland. Uh, um, VAR: We got Tomas Kwiatkowski. From Poland, and his assistant is Bartosz Frankowski from Poland, and the fourth official, as I said, is from Romania, just to mix it up a little bit. Istvan Kovacs, he rings a bell that name. How are they doing? Well, our Real Madrid, what have they done since we played them? Well, yes, Carlo Ancelotti had the benefit, of course, of resting most of his key players for their weekend match against relegation threatened Getafe. Uh, they still ground out a 1 0 win thanks to a deflected second half goal, but Getafe had a good go. Barcelona clinched the title, of course, with four games to spare, and Dirty Madrid still battle for second spot with their neighbours, Atletico, who uh, shot themselves in the foot a little bit, Atletico. They, they lost to bottom side Elke at the weekend so Dirty Madrid now sit two points clear of them in second spot probably look probably look as though they will take runners up it looks like old old yes uh, another thug not Rudiger but Camavinga uh, got yellow carded against Getafe but uh, apparently he may have an injury he was taken off injured so well, it might be a little bit of a trick. He might be fully fit to play against us, but uh, that, that's one of their doubts for this this uh, this game. And of course, they're going to have Militao back. He, he will be back from suspension, and he would normally you'd expect him to replace the thug Rudiger at the back, but he's he's certainly more of a football than Rudiger. Okay, then again, there is a potential to keep Rudiger into Counter City's attacking threat, of course, especially people like Haaland. They're talking about the Real Madrid wall, aren't they, at the back? Uh, it probably won't be pretty, that's for sure. Whatever trick Ancelotti has up his sleeve, we'll have to see. But uh, it'd be interesting if Rudiger does play. As I said, it's not expected to with uh, Militao coming back in the team. But I think a, a, a strong defence or physical defence, uh, as long as it's fair, uh, and obviously, uh, and a sort of aged midfield again. He, he probably should do putting some young legs in that midfield, but probably, he'll probably stick with his uh, tried and trusted, his more mature guys. But uh, it'd be interesting to see how Ancelotti plays it. But some people think he might he might put a couple of younger legs in there rather than rather than the Modric's. But I doubt it personally. There is a confidence about Madrid, of course. There is plenty of big talk as to how they were the better team at the Bernabeu, uh, how they got cheated by the referee because of the ball going out and all this absolute nonsense. As, as far as I'm concerned, it was a fair, a draw was a fair result. If anything, City was slightly the better team, but uh, that doesn't mean they can't say they were. And at City, of course, uh, Ancelotti wanted that win. He wanted that win at the Bernabeu. That's why he's very animated. That's why he got booked. Not just because he considered the ball had gone out, you know, obviously to his, well, his, four, his 2020 vision spotted it going out when a linesman uh, didn't. But, uh, yeah, so he wanted a win to bring back to the Etihad. He didn't get one. And I think he knows that uh, it's going to be a tough task. But, of course, it's Real Madrid. They should never be written off. They certainly, certainly can't be written off at the Bernabeu. I, I, don't, I don't think they hold that sort of um, aura away from home. So I'm not really worried about that. But, uh, of course, you can't write them off, as we found out uh, 12 months ago. But, as I said, it's, it's at the Etihad. So uh, we should we should should be okay. So let's hope on the night that football wins through and not thuggery or dirty play or or wrong shouts for calls, etc, etc. Let's hope football wins through on the on the night. And obviously, if football's going to win through, that brings us to us, doesn't it? Because we're the team going to be playing the football. Um, yeah, prediction-wise, interesting. Um, we've got Andy Morrison is saying 1-1. For this one, but he did have us winning the first leg two one. So whether he changed that now, I'm not too sure. I think he probably would, but I'll have to go with what he predicted in the City magazine. I'm going for a three one for this, a three one uh, victory for City. And looking at the City team, I mean, rested for Everton surely to start on the bench on on Sunday with Stones, Grealish, De Bruyne, and Bernardo. I don't think there's any doubt that they'll start. Uh, no sign of Aki on the bench or any comments. So 
I, I think he may get on the bench for this one, but I certainly don't think he'll be starting this game, do you? I don't think Aki will be, is of it. If he'd been on the bench against Everton, there's a possibility, but I don't think there's a cat in hell's chance. And the only real possible change, I think, to the first leg, I'm going to be very boring, is probably did Foden do enough to, to get into the team? I don't think anyone else particularly did. I mean, even, even Mara's. Even though he had a reasonable first half, I think I think Pep's Pep's got to sort of uh, do his tried and trusted for this one that worked against Madrid that worked for the first leg of this, so that discounts Foden. And let's face it, he's only he's only actually started three Champions League games. All right, there might be a couple of injuries involved there, but he's only actually started three Champions League games this season, Phil Foden. So Pep's not been using him uh, as you probably would have expected him to in a, in a, a previous season. So yes, I think he'll. I think he will show faith in the guys who played in the first leg. I don't think. The, I think most people got that right. I can't. He might spring a surprise, but I'm going to go for that for my eleven. It's exactly the same team again. Edison Walker, Stones, Diaz, Akanji, Rodri, Gundo, De Bruyne, Bernardo, Grealish, and Haaland. As I said, it's only really Foden. Foden, Mares could probably be considered. Perhaps Pep wants to change something a little bit. Um, try and be a little bit clever, but um, yeah, let, let's let's hope he's a bit more normal, <laughs> not doing his pep things. But then we said that if he does his pep thing and it works and it's something different to confuse Ancelotti, so what? But uh, we'll go with that. Let me know your thoughts, guys. Anyway, your thoughts and your lineup. Right, that's that done. That's our 11 that's going to take us through to uh, Istanbul or wherever it might be, because obviously I believe there's going to be uh, trouble in Istanbul with the political uh, goings on, elections, etc., etc. But so that that's, it has been hinted that Lisbon had been sound, sounded out as a replacement, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. I think I think they should just give up on Istanbul. I mean, it never seems to happen, does it? Right, on to the odds, on to the quick odds before we go. I don't condone gambling, please, and when the fun stops, stop. These are all general odds as at the 14th of May 2023. Average prices, you might get a little bit better than this if you shop around. To win the Champions League, of course, City remain four to six on favourites. Real Madrid were seven to two; they're now out to nine to two. Inter were actually thirteen to two; they're now into threes based on the fact that they got the older two 0 lead going into the home leg. Is it? <laughs> it doesn't matter; they both play at the same ground. It gets very confusing. Of course, AC Milan were seventeen to two outsiders anyway, but now they've gone out to thirty three to one. The match odds themselves, City are four to seven on, so that's that's a doable price if you fancy City victory. If you don't mind betting odds on, that's fine. A draw is ten to three. A Madrid victory, if you're a Madrid fan and you think we can you can do it, is nine to two. Just to qualify though, City are two to seven on, so not great, but Real Madrid are a more interesting five to two against. First goal scorer, of course, Haaland's nine to four. He finally got on the score sheet after a couple of games not uh, against Everton. KDB is at nine to one. He actually obviously scored in Madrid and opened the scoring at the Etihad last season. And he got Gundogan at twelve, who seems to have found his uh, scoring touch, of course. For Real Madrid, Benzema six. He scored Madrid's first goal at the Etihad last season. Vinicius Junior's tens, Rodrigo's thirteens. Anytime goal scorer. Well, it's got to be KDB, 3-1, to one, always good value. Vinicius Jr. is 3-1 to one as well. Correct score in 90 minutes. Andy Morrison's 1-1 one, one is 7-1. to one. My 3-1 one is 11-1. to one. And last season, the 4-3, uh, you can get 80-1 to one if you fancy another 4-3. I'll take it. As long as we win, I don't care. Uh, I'll take that, 80-1. to one. Uh, Other scores, 0-0. Zero, zero. Taking it into uh, extra time and penalties is six. These are all ninety minutes, of course. Sixteen to one. A two-two is fourteen to one. A one-nil City win is eight to one. A two-one City win is fifteen to two. If Real Madrid are going to nick it one-nil, it's sixteens, and if they're going to nick it two-one, it's sixteens. Half time, full time. Uh, a draw in City is nineteen to five. A draw in Madrid is ten to one. A draw and a draw is six to one. City, City as it was last season, five to two. Madrid and Madrid's fifteen to two. Madrid and then City to totally turn it round and win at full time is twenty to one. City to win at half time. Madrid, Madrid to turn it round at full time is forty to one. Goals over under. If you're looking at Andy Morrison's over one and a half is uh, one to six on. No, I'll forget that. Under two and a half though. I think it's going to be low scoring, a bit bit better. Eleven to eight. Me over three and a half goals is what I'm predicting. That's six to four, so that's okay. And under three and a half is 8 to 15. 
Last season, of course, it was over six and a half. You can get 16 to one. It doesn't seem very generous, does it? Over six and a half, uh, 16 to one, but hey, that's what it is. Both teams to score. Me and Andy, of course, expect both teams to score. And that's yes at four to six on, as it was last season as well. And a no is six to five. So the bookies think both teams will score as well. So it might be worth a little bit of value just say no uh, <laughs> win, winning margin last season of course it was a one goal winning margin you get 11 to 4 on one goal for a two goal winning margin as I'm predicting you get 7 to 2 against a Madrid one goal winning margin is 13 to 2 a Madrid two goal winning margin is 14 a score draw as per Andy Morrison as I said he might change his thoughts now but Andy Morrison is 4 to 1 Haaland hat trick 10 to 1 to score first City 4 to 9 on borderline interest on that one Real Madrid 15 to 8 so there you go guys that's that's a look at the prices that's have a look at our, that's our preview done and dusty with my start 11 let me know what you think uh, let me know what you're having a bet on if you're having a little flutter uh, what you fancy yourself be great to hear from you. I'll be back, of course, with the ratings and talking point show, both uh, to be done on Thursday. Uh, I can't give you the timings on that one. And then coming soon, of course, the preview. And it could be a title-winning game. We could have even won the title by then. Uh, a preview will be out on Friday of Manchester City against uh, one of the le- one of the season's disappointments, really. Uh, <laughs> disasters, I think we can say, but uh, you never know. Um, you know, they might have saved it all up for us, might they? But as I said, if Nottingham Forest stuff a hassle on Saturday, we've won the league anyway, so it doesn't matter. But, uh, yeah, we still need two points. We still need a couple of draws or a win. Come on. Uh, it's not over yet, is it? But, uh, of course, check in on Friday for my preview of Manchester City versus Chelsea. Thanks for watching, guys. Until we meet again, that's one thing, don't I? Please stay safe, Blues. Come on, City! Bye for now. <laughs>